Welcome back, everyone. Uh, today, uh, we are going to officially start uh, learning this course together. Uh, we will begin with some uh, preliminary uh, preparations on discrete probability. Uh, so I have already posted those questions on the course website. So it will be a good idea if you can uh, try working on those questions first uh, before watching this video. So let's begin with some uh, basics. Uh, here is a basic setup for discrete probability problems. Uh, we will consider a sample space denoted by a big omega. Uh, this is called big omega or just omega. Uh, it includes uh, all the possible scenarios. So those omega 1, omega 2, all the way to omega n, those are all possible scenarios. So those include all the possible scenarios. Uh, here n is either a positive integer or even can be infinity. Uh, with each omega i representing a possible scenario. Uh, we will have many examples later on to, to actually uh, cast this meaning in a particular example. Also given is a probability measure. Uh, most time we simply call it probability. Uh, P, uh, which assigns each scenario a probability or a chance. So that is the meaning here. So this probability measure P assigns each omega i with a probability pi. Uh, here we put pi to be between zero and one uh, with both endpoints excluded. Uh, if you want, you can put zero to one included, right? And the zero and one are two uh, degenerated points and uh, it, uh, it's, it's not that interesting for the zero case or for the one case. Zero means it will not happen. One means uh, it will happen for sure. And of course, we need this condition because uh, those omega i's, they include all possible scenarios, all, right? So all, the meaning of all is uh, represented by this identity. Adding all the probabilities together, we get one. Uh, next, we define a random variable denoted by x on the given space omega p as a function mapping from omega to r. Uh, this is an undergraduate level definition. Uh, it's, it's enough for our purpose. Uh, later on, we will do a little generalization to, uh, to a better version, uh, but for now, we can stick to this. We can simply sync a random variable as a function mapping from the sample space to a real number, okay? Uh, that means for each possible scenario, this random variable x assigns a value which we, which we use small xi to denote. This small xi is a real number. So uh, everything under the definition of a random variable is pretty much the same as the definition of a function, right? Except uh, in the regular definition of function, we usually define it to be a mapping from some real numbers to another real numbers, right? So that's why we usually call y equals fx. And x is a number, y is another number, right? But here, uh, the version is slightly more abstract. So the domain is not, is not or may not be real set. It can be some, uh, it can be some anything. It can be even, even uh, non-numerical values, right? For instance, um, we, can call, we can consider a coin example, then my, so let's say I toss a coin once. There are only two possibilities, right? So it either ends up at uh, tail or head, 
So H stands for head, T stands for tail. And in this case, we can define a, a random variable, right? So if a head shows up, I win $10. If a tail shows up, I lose $20. So I define a random variable, right? So what I define is when the future scenario is a head, I get $10, so it's positive 10. If the future scenario is a tail, I lose $20, so it's negative 20. So it is a function mapping from this particular space omega to two real numbers, right? So it's a function, so it's a definition of function, uh, except uh, right now the domain, it's, it's a little bit abstract. Uh, by the given definition, we know when x equals x omega i, the probability is pi, right? Uh, here I have a rather important note, uh, although all omegas are different, right? Because if, if they are the same, we can simply uh, uh, eliminate the repeating ones, right? But some x i's can, can be the same. So x i's may coincide, right? That's the same as, as definition, right? At each x, there is one y. Right? You cannot define. Um, you cannot define for two different um, uh, version of x. Right? But uh, for different x, y can be the same. So when I when I draw a graph, so here is the graph. Right? So actually, many of them will will have the same value, the same horizontal value. So it is okay to have the same y value. Right? But uh, we cannot define function. Uh, for the same point, we have two x's, right? That's not even a function. So that's why here, the probability that x equals a specific number may not be equal to pi, okay? Uh, to see this, we can consider a trivial example. Any constant is a random variable, right? It's a trivial random variable, right? So x, so let, let C be a real number, X equals C is a random variable. Then we have the probability that X equals C is one, right? Because that's the definition. Although we can have many different scenarios and each scenario is between the other one, right? So that's the setup. Uh, next, we need the definition of mean and variance. Uh, I assume you already know all of this, but uh, nevertheless, let's quickly go through those basic definitions. Uh, the mean, also called expectation, expected value, uh, is defined as here because we consider discrete probability. So it's the summation of value times the corresponding probability. So again, note that some of the xi's may be the same, right? But uh, uh, we can write this general formula. Uh, to define variance, we can even define a more general version uh, that is covariance. Okay, covariance is always between two random variables. So here we call them x and y. Uh, the covariance between x and y is defined in this box. So it's the expected value of x minus its mean times y minus its mean, right? So we can easily write it down, okay, break it as a summation, right? So again, that's because we consider discrete probability, okay? Uh, when X and Y coincide, we have the variance of a random variable, okay? So which is nothing but the covariance of a random variable with itself, okay? And then we know it's expected value of the square of the difference of the random variable and uh, the mean. And uh, by breaking the, uh, or by completing the square out, uh, we can get this, uh, the next formula, which is often more hopeful in actual calculations. Uh, once we have the definitions of covariance and variance, we can define the correlation coefficient low. Um, sometimes we just write low, sometimes we, uh, in order to emphasize it is the correlation between x and y, we will put the subscript to, to denote this uh, information. 
uh, it's nothing but covariance divided by the uh, omega x, uh, sigma x and sigma y. Uh, by the way, uh, sigma x is the so-called standard deviation. Okay, often we just write SD to, to denote uh, uh, sigma x. Here I give you a quick question. Uh, can you show that rho is always between negative one and one? Uh, I believe you already know this result, but uh, uh, you may not know the proof, so give it a try. And uh, here uh, inside the bracket is the uh, possible answer. You can, you can search Holder's inequality to see uh, what it is. Uh, the next one, which often we encounter in actual questions, is conditional probability. Uh, here, I only give you a very, very basic definition. Uh, it's, well, you can even call it a naive definition. Uh, let A and B be two sets, okay? A set is uh, a collection of some possible scenarios from the sample space. So uh, let's say you have 10 omegas ranging from omega one to omega 10. A can be omega one, omega two, omega three. So you simply correct the first three. Okay, B can be something else. Uh, here we, we, we require the probability of B to be greater than zero. Uh, this is always the case for us because uh, we consider P to be between zero and one with zero and one excluded, right? So the probability is always greater than zero. So we define the conditional probability of A given B as the probability of the intersection. This is called the intersection. Okay, uh, that is the common, the common scenarios shared by both A and B. So it's the probability of the intersection divided by the probability of B. So the uh, denominator is the condition, okay? A naive interpolation is that conditioning changes the sample space from the original omega to a smaller one. And this smaller one is actually B. So you change the original sample space to your condition. And because the new sample space is smaller, we need to consider the intersection, right? Anything outside of B will not happen. So that's the uh, naive interpolation of conditional probability. Uh, of course, we will have uh, more examples uh, to actually apply this formula. So this is the first example, okay? Um, let's read the question together. Uh, in a class, 66% of the students are girls, 44% of the girls like comics, and 16% of the boys like comics. What is the probability that a student selected at random likes comics? So uh, for all probability questions, I recommend you to first uh, to study the question to know what are the features you are talking about or the question is about. Second, uh, to uh, introduce some notations for the features. So in this particular question, uh, we have two features. Okay, uh, the first one is about gender, right? And there are two possibilities. A student may be a girl or maybe a boy. So that's the first feature, okay? And we can use A to denote girls. That means A is the set of all girls in this class. Uh, of course, the complement will be boys, right? So in other words, the complement will be boys. So we use a small c uh, in the subscript to denote complement. Right? Complement is the remaining part. Right? So for a class, if you randomly select student, the student is either a girl or a boy. 
right? So that's why, you know, either or, that is the uh, definition of concept, uh, complement. So the second feature is light comics, right? The second feature we talk about is whether a student likes comics or not. So for the same reason, we introduce B as like. So B is the set of students who like comics. So obviously, the complement B are those who do not like comics, right? So uh, once that is clear, the next thing we're going to do is to, uh, is to interpret the information. So the first one is PA equals 66%, right? 66% of the students are girls. And by the way, from that, we know the complement is the remaining part. So it's one minus 66%, uh, so it's 34%. Next, we know 44% of the girls like comics. So now here, uh, we need to pay special attention. So this 44%, I put a question, right? Is this 44% the probability of B? So this is actually wrong, okay? 44% is not the probability for those who like comics because according to the information, 44 is the percentage for girls who like comics, right? So what we have here is conditional probability. So this is the probability that uh, students like comics, but given the condition that they are girls. So it's conditional probability. Okay, uh, for the same reason, uh, the next one is PV given boys, boys is complement. Right, so uh, step one is to uh, list the features, okay? Uh, by the way, you don't need to list the girls and the boys at the same time because a feature, okay, so feature one is about gender, right? And there are two results for the gender feature, boys and girls. And the feature two is about uh, comics. And there are two uh, results, uh, either a student likes or does not like comics, right? So the feature is, is not about all the results. It's, it's about the specific thing we are talking about. Uh, next, what do we want to study? We want to know the probability that a student selected random likes comics. So this time we were trying to calculate the probability of B, okay? Uh, there are many ways to, to solve this. Uh, one of the ways is, is to uh, draw a graph. So I draw a box to represent all the students, okay? Uh, I draw a circle to represent A. So this is the set of girls. Everything outside is the set of boys. Uh, let me use a different color. So I draw another circle which represent the students who like comics. Uh, right now, I want to know the probability of B. That is, I want to know uh, the blue circle, right? Okay, so uh, in order to continue, we can, uh, let's use another color here. So this is the intersection, right? Intersection is the common part which is shared by both A and B. So, and uh, we have two extra parts, right? So let's call this uh, A1. Let's call this part A1, okay? 
So A has two components, right? A can be written as A1 union A intersector B. Okay, and A1 and A and A1 and A intersector B, they are disjoint in the sense that they do not share anything, right? And uh, well, it's B1. So let's call this part B1. Okay, for the same reason, we have B equals B1 union A intersect B. Okay, so in order to figure out the probability of B, we need to know the probability of uh, B1 and uh, the probability of the intersection. Okay, uh, intersection is easy to do because uh, we, we already defined here, right? So in order to know the intersection, we simply use the probability of B times the probability of the uh, conditional, right? Uh, you can also have another formula. So the probability of B given A, right? So that's the same thing. So now uh, the first thing we calculate so let's use red color. Uh, the probability of A intersect B will be equal to the probability of A times the probability of B given A. Uh, we choose this particular information is because we know PB given A, right? And now we can calculate uh, the result is about 29.04%. Okay, so how do we calculate uh, the probability of B1? In other words, what is B1? Right. So we know uh, from the graph that B1 is this part. So I'm using vertical line to denote B1. Okay. Obviously, B1 is inside B. And uh, uh, I claim, I claim this. I claim B1 is A intersect. So as uh, the A complement intersects B, okay? Uh, take a look. So what is A complement? A complement is everything outside of A, right? So if I use line to denote a complement, so right, so B1 is exactly the common part of B between B and A complement, right? So if you agree with that, we can apply the same kind of formula to calculate, right? Again, both are known to us at this moment because the first one is 34%, the next one is 16%, times them together, we get about 5.44%. So finally, we know the probability of B is the probability of A intersect B plus the probability of a complement intersect B, okay? And uh, the final result is about 34.48%. So that is the uh, probability of, uh, of B, okay? Uh, let me get uh, more space. Here, uh, to, to continue this, this question, uh, we can even talk about something in general, okay? Uh, because this formula holds in general, not just for this question, okay? Uh, the reason is it's straightforward. So let omega be the sample space, right? By the definition of complement, we know omega equals a union a complement, right? And a and between a and a complement, there's nothing in common. 
so they are disjoint so they are disjoint a and a complement they are disjoint by the way uh, this is a simple partition of omega partition is to cut the sample space into disjoint portions okay uh, now we know pb equals pb intersect omega right because omega is the sample space so a smaller thing inside omega intersect omega will give the b itself right so that's clear and we use this definition a union a complement right and by the distribution law we know that this is b intersect a union b intersect a complement again because a and a complement are disjoint so the smaller part of them will be disjoint as well because they are disjoint the probability of the union is the sum of them right so you can quickly generalize this formula right so let's say i have a partition i from one to n ai and by partition i mean ai intersect aj is empty as long as i is not equal to j then we have pb equals the summation from one to n of probability b intersect ai draw a graph try to understand uh, the true meaning behind this formula okay so um, a naive way to understand is uh, here you have a piece of cake and you want to know how big it is okay uh, one possible way to measure it is to cut it into small portions okay here refers to cutting in cut it into small portions and uh, i mean cutting the entire cake into small portions and to measure uh, how much of b is accounted in each small word, uh, small portion so that's the uh, basic idea of doing this uh, this uh, has a name called the total probability formula so this is called total probability formula okay so if you search uh, what's the next question the next question is what is the probability that a randomly selected student is a boy given that he does not like comics okay so uh, first of all the next one is we are trying to calculate the probability that uh, does not like comics so does not like comics is b complement given that the select student is a boy the boy is a complement right so what we are trying to calculate is the conditional probability of b complement given a complement so directly apply the definition okay uh, the denominator we already know that is uh, what is the denominator it's 34 uh, percent uh, we just need to figure out uh, uh, the uh, the numerator part okay so oh i misinterpret the the question uh the the second one we are, we are trying to calculate it's uh, it's not that it's actually something different let me get a razor to erase this so uh, the probability we are trying to calculate is that uh, a randomly selected student is a boy so uh, what we are trying to calculate is the probability that a student is a boy a boy is a complement given that he does not like comics so the condition is uh, he does not like comics so that is the uh, the set of b complement okay so 
we still apply the same definition. Okay, uh, again, the denominator is known to us. It's simply one minus the, uh, the, the one we just calculated. So this we still don't know yet, but from the previous question, we know the complement is one minus the probability of B. Okay, so next we just need to figure out uh, what is the uh, complement, right? Of uh, what is the, uh, the, uh, the numerator part. So in order to do that, let's recall the total probability formula again. Okay, but now we are trying to write it in a different way. So uh, what we are trying to do is to uh, work on the probability of a complement. Okay, so right now we can think the omega as a partition of B and B complement. So we know this is intersect B plus A complement intersect B complement, right? So basically, uh, it's the same formula. So replace B by A complement, replace A by B, then we get this result, okay? Uh, the reason I apply this is because on the left-hand side, I know, right, which is 34%, okay? On the right-hand side, the second term is something we are trying to figure out, right? And this, what is this? This is A complement intersect B, which we, which, we, which we already know, right? Which we already calculated here, right? So from here, we know A complement intersect B is actually P of AC minus P of AC intersect B, which is, 34% minus um, 5.44%. And uh, the result is 28.56%. Okay. Uh, once, we, once we finish this step, we can directly calculate the final answer. Right. And uh, simply plug in both results, uh, we can get the final answer. It's about 43.59%. Um, okay, uh, what's next? I also ask you, what is the probability that a randomly select student is a boy given that he likes comics? So uh, the final one asks you, what is the probability that this is a boy, so it's AC, given that he likes comics, so it's B. So I leave this to you, okay, the, the result I already gave you, so it's about 15.78%, uh, so that's the result. You apply the same definition and uh, uh, try to work out both the denominator and uh, the numerator, okay? Uh, I will stop here for this particular question. I spend the, um, uh, quite some time on the first question, uh, assuming that you don't have any background in uh, probability. Uh, but of course, I know that many of you are excellent in probability, so this is probably uh, going too slow for you. Uh, that's why for the future exercises, I will go a lot faster, uh, not going into every single detail. So uh, please um, work on those questions first. Uh, I will stop here and uh, see you at the